one can have darshanam of Sri Ji Sita Devi at two places. One is at Chitrakoot and the other is at Trikoot, which is another name for Lanka. At Chitrakoot, the residence of Ayodhya and Sri Bharati Maharaj had her divine darshanam. Hanumanji Maharaj, on the other hand, had mother's darshanam at Lanka or Trikoot. Chitrakoot represents renunciation where the Lord established himself as a perfect renunciant along with his internal potency, Mother Sita, and his eternal servitor, Brother Sri Lakshmanji Maharaj. Sri Rama, the Lord, is in the mood of absolute abandon and vairagya at Chitrakur. Thus, the land of Chitrakur represents the mode of nivritti or the path of spiritual abandon. It is here that Sri Bharati Maharaj came to see his brothers and sister-in-law, Sita Devi, having heartfully resigned his position as king of Ayodhya Ji. Here Bharati Maharaj too was in the mode of abandon. Mother Sita is the personification of absolute peace. In the land of abandon and vairagya, peace is available with very little effort. She attains her pristine beauty wherever there is non-attachment and giving up of the me and mine tendency. This is the real nature of peace. The impediments that one faces with vairagya firmly established in the heart is minimal practically with no challenges. On the other hand, Lanka or Trikut is the land of pravritti or the land of self-interest and personal gain. Such a locality is full with the crocodiles and sharks of material desires that can gobble up one's happiness and inner tranquility within no time. But in this very land, peace personified Sita Devi stayed captive. The king of the renounced order, Sri Hanumanji Maharaj, met Sita Devi for the first time in the very land of pravritti. A person who has a sense of abandon offers everything to the Lord and to others. His happiness is in serving the Lord and his devotees. On the other hand, a man possessed by pravritti only knows how to hijack others' rights. He knows only to eat into other people's property and dominion. When Hanumanji approached the land of Trikut, Lanka, the mammoth mountain Maina first tried to delay Hanumanji when he was hurrying up in search of Sita Devi. He offered his golden body for the pleasure of Hanumanji. Next, the representative of the Devatas, Surasa, tried to eat up Hanumanji Maharaj. Next, the ogress, Singhika, wanted to swallow Hanumanji. On entering Lanka, the demoness Lankini wanted to consume Hanumanji. Thus, approaching the land of bhukti or enjoyment comes with its own perils. It may appear that an enjoyer of sense pleasures is consuming sense objects. In reality, the sense objects themselves consume the consumer. This is an established truth. The sense enjoyer is so drunk with the alcohol of sense pleasure that he happily gives himself up to the rising flames of the senses. The stupid fireflies give up their life attracted by the flames of the candle. All the flies are reduced to ashes, but the candle flame burns with renewed brightness. Following his meeting with Sita Devi, Hanumanji told the mother that he was hungry and sought her permission to eat the fruits of the Ashoka Vatika. Mother Sita inquired as to why Hanumanji had not consumed anything on the way. To this, Hanumanji Maharaj replied that all along his way, he could only meet consumers and not a single soul could offer him anything. Our journey into the land of senses shall only consume us. This is the opinion of the Ramcharit Manas. Sri Hanumanji Maharaj is the master of all yogas. He reduced his size on certain occasions and on certain occasions increased his size. He would sometimes become light as a feather to tackle a certain situation and sometimes become heavier than a mountain so as to handle other challenges. What is the hidden meaning behind such changes in Hanumanji's shapes and weight on various occasions? This has some connection with the paths of pravritti, involvement within the world and nivritti, the renounced order. The pravritti marga is beset with different problems, especially when you are trying to balance material life with your spiritual goal of attaining the Lord. While still being actively involved with rearing a family, going to work and satisfying various needs of the family that includes entertainment. Walking the Pravriti Marga and serving the Supreme Being at the same time 
requires a great amount of amalgamation of karma, jnana and bhakti yoga simultaneously. There has to be committed activity balanced with a feeling of complete abandon at the same time. This is one of the most difficult things to do, especially for a householder who is committed towards attaining the Lord, continuing to support his family to the best of his abilities. Let us link the householder with the Leelas of Hanumanji Maharaj that he has set as an example for society to follow. When Hanumanji becomes small, when confronting Surasa, that is Bhakti Yoga. When he attains a colossal size, that becomes Jnana Yoga. When he becomes heavy, that is the pull of Jnana. When he becomes light, that is to become rid of the doership during Karma. On similar lines, when a householder is thinking of the Lord in his heart, he surrenders all notions of me and mine and understands fully that the Lord is the one who is maintaining him. This is Bhakti Yoga. When he is in office, he establishes his intelligence through Jnana. There, he maintains his dignity and displays power. When dealing with the family, he works with total dedication but is establishing the truth that it is the Lord working through him and he is a zero without the Lord's direct presence in his life. With this, he establishes the principles of Karma Yoga. When a householder makes decisions including tough ones, he does not melt in sentimentality. He trusts the Lord and knowing well that his intelligence is under the Lord's supervision, arrives at the best possible solutions to tackle challenges. He becomes light through Karma Yoga, becomes heavy and big with Jnana Yoga and small with Bhakti Yoga. Thus, we can draw lessons from the life of Hanumanji Maharaj and Sita Devi.